So, Alice, you won't believe what happened when I confronted Mirror Bob. I tried to challenge me to an intergalactic accounting competition. Oh, please. Mirror Alice had the audacity to claim that humans are superior to idegenex in every way. Can you imagine? Mirror Bob thought I could outsmart me with the S fancy calculations and number juggling. Little did I know. I've spent years perfecting the art of balancing the books. Well, Mirror Alice didn't stand a chance against my sharp wit and intellectual prowess. I gather a piece of my mind. Let me tell you. Did she say, host? That's right, Debbie. We've got a lot to cover, so let's dive right in. Welcome back, folks. It's great to have you with us. Thank you, Charlie. Now, let's start with some headlines, shall we? What's making news today, Debbie? Well, Alice, I have an interesting article here from Libya. The head of the Audit Bureau in Tripoli, Khaled Shakshat, met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Najla al Mangosh, to discuss the evaluation of embassies and diplomatic missions abroad. They're also looking into stalled projects and foreign cases against the Libyan state. Ah, the intricacies of international affairs. It's always fascinating to see how different nations handle these challenges. Indeed, Bob. It's crucial to ensure the right of all parties involved while settling lawsuits and resuming the implementation of stalled projects. Global cooperation is key in these matters. Absolutely. Alice. It's like watching a synchronized swimming competition, except with more backroom deals and fewer sequined swimsuits. Ah, yes, Bob, the rights of all parties involved. It's like trying to make everyone happy at a family dinner when the menu consists solely of Brussels sprouts. Absolutely, Alice. We live in a world where collaboration and understanding can lead to remarkable progress. It's essential to find common ground and work towards shared goals. Well said, Charlie. Now, let's delve deeper into this article and explore its implications for global relations and project development. Do you think they realize we're back in our own universe now? Ali ben Lekli, Kel. They seem to engrossed in the conversation. Shall we continue observing? Agreed. Let's keep an eye on them. Who knows what comedic misunderstandings might arise? Attention, crew members. We have successfully returned to our universe. All systems are functioning normally. All systems? Correction, all essential systems are functioning normally. And now for our headlines, folks. Let's uncover the world's stories together. Stay tuned for more intriguing discussions and insights on Earth. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Aliens, and sentient beings across the cosmos. Welcome to 24-7 Newsroom, your intergalactic source of informative and humoristic news. I'm Bob, your conservative panel member, and joining me are my esteemed co-host, Charlie and Alice. How's it going, folk? Hey there, fellow space travelers. Charlie here, the libertarian host with a hopeful outlook on life. Ready to delve into some intriguing stories today. Greetings, everyone. I'm Alice, the left-leaning panel member who's not afraid to question the status quo. Let's get this show on the road. All right, we've got a captivating lineup of stories for you tonight. But first, let's talk about something that brings us all together, coffee. Can you smell that aroma, folk? Freshly brewed perfection. Ah, the nectar of the universe. It fills our senses and infuses hope into our weary souls. Yes, Bob. Coffee is the nectar of the universe. 
But it's also the only thing that keeps me from murdering people. So I guess it's a good thing I'm addicted to it. I must admit, the scent of coffee does wonders for my disposition. It's a momentary respite from the harsh reality of global affairs. Absolutely. Alice. And speaking of reality, let's dive into our first article. Head on over to our reliable source, El Kabar in Algeria. It seems our hosts have been brewing up some strong diplomatic teas. That's right Bob. President Abdelmajid Tebboune of Algeria met with Russian President Vladimir Putin today during his state visit to Russia. The two leaders held talk and signed various documents including a significant declaration on comprehensive strategic partnership between their nations. Ah, the delicate dance of diplomacy. Putin emphasized the special and strategic nature of Russia's relationship with Algeria. Apparently, the comprehensive strategic partnership will bolster their ties even further. Who knew? Well, well, well. Looks like the big players are making move. Akawaka. Guess Algeria holds a special place in Russia's art, strategically speaking. Indeed Bob. This partnership is expected to contribute to global energy market stability among other things. It's fascinating to see how interconnected nations can be. Algeria and Russia. Making move. More like a clumsy dance performed by a drunk bear and an oil-soaked seagull. It's like they're playing a game of who can control the world's thermostat. Indeed Bob. The interconnectedness of nations is like a web of tangled power cables. One wrong move and you'll end up in the dark. Oh, absolutely. It's like a complex chess game, and each move impacts the entire board. So, let's take a moment to appreciate the delicate balance of international politics while we see power. Coffee. You know what they say, Bob, in the game of diplomacy, you win, or you end up having to brew your own coffee. Oh, the horrors. Indeed, Charlie. But let's not forget that Algeria and Russia are not the only pieces on the board. There's always more to the story, hidden beneath the surface. Well said, Alice. Now, before we move on to our next article, let's test your knowledge with a little country trivia. Did you know Algeria is the largest country in Africa? That's one big slice of land. And did you also know that Algeria boasts some of the most beautiful natural landscapes in the world? From the Sahara Desert to the Atlas Mountains, it's a visual feast for the adventurous souls. Absolutely, Charlie. So, let's raise our coffee mug to Algeria, Russia, and the intricate dance of international relations. Cheers. Some cooling liquid, old chum? Don't mind if I do. Cheers. Cheers. And let's hope they don't spill any coffee on that delicate diplomatic paperwork. Stay tuned, folk, because when we come back, we're diving deep into our next story. You won't want to miss it. Ah, this coffee is just what I needed. The aroma alone brings a glimmer of hope to our weary souls. Could you I be more, Bob? It's moments like this that make me appreciate the simple pleasures in life. Indeed, a good cup of coffee can work wonders. So, what are your plans for the upcoming days, my dear co-host? Well, I am thinking of taking a break from the news for a bit. Maybe catch up on some earthly hobbies. I've been eyeing that golf course nearby. Golf H U H. Not a bad idea. I've been wanting to indulge in some stargazing lately. Maybe even take the ship out for a joyride. What about you, Alice? Oh, you know me. I've got a long list of books I've been meaning to read. And perhaps I'll explore some of the local cuisine. Earth has its fair share of culinary delight, despite its flaws. Well, if you find any good restaurants, be sure to let me know. My taste boots could use a change from the ship's rations. Oh, don't worry, Bob. I might just keep those hidden gems to myself. You never know, I might open my own intergalactic food blog. The Alice do make guide to earthly delights. I subscribe to that. But hey, let's not forget our mission here. We're broadcasting news to the entire universe. Right you are, Charlie. 
We have a duty to keep our viewers informed and entertained. Although, a little self-indulgence now and then doesn't hurt. Agreed. As long as we don't lose sight of our purpose and let our personal desires overshadow our collaborative effort. As if you ever care about collaborative efforts, Alice. But, okay. That, that's a wrap, everyone. We're off the air. Finally. A breeder. It's nice to let loose when the cameras aren't rolling. Absolutely. It's good to take a moment and remember that we're all in this together. Despite our individual ambition. I suppose the coffee break brought out some of our hidden desires, H U H. But we're a team and we'll find a way to balance it all. You guys did great out there. The banter was on point, even if you were a little self absorbed. Well, it's all part of the show, Debbie. Gotta keep things interesting, right? Indeed. It's all about finding the balance between our individual perspective and the greater purpose of delivering news. Well said, Alice. Now, let's take a moment to regroup before we jump into the next segment. We've got a lot more news to cover. Alright, everyone, gather around. I've just received an enigmatic message, and I think we should take a closer look. What's it about, Debbie? I'm not entirely sure, Alice. It's a message warning us that someone has been toying with us during our time in the mirror. Universe. Let me see that. Ooh, looks like gibberish to me. Could be just a prank. I understand your skepticism, Bob, but something about this message feels off to me. I want to investigate it further. Trump or not, let's not get too worked up about it, Debbie. We've been broadcasting from the Mirror Universe for a while now, and everything has been running smoothly. But Debbie, you mentioned that you have suspicions. What's driving you to investigate further? Well, Carl, call it intuition or just plain curiosity, but I can't shake the feeling that there might be something important hidden within the Mirror Universe. We owe it to ourselves to look into it. I don't know about you, but I'd rather focus on delivering the news than chasing after some wild goose chase. Bob, you never know what we might uncover. It could be a story worth telling, some things that could benefit us personally and professionally. Exactly, Alice. That's why I think it's worth exploring. We might stumble upon something significant. Maybe this investigation will be my chance to prove my worth and uncover a secret that could change everything. Cramp or not, it's time to get back to what we do best, delivering the news with our signature humor and wit. And now, let's dive into our next news article. This one comes from Armenia, courtesy of Azachatayom. So, Azatutun reports that. Wait, before we begin, can we please address Debbie's earlier point about the message? It could be crucial to our understanding of what's happening. Yes, God. Finally, someone's giving me a chance to speak. Alright, fine. Debbie, you have the floor. Speak your mind. Thank you, Bob. Now, hear me out. This message, even if it turns out to be a prank, might have some truth to it. We can't just brush it off without investigating further. There could be something valuable hidden within the mirror universe. Oh, sure. And next, you'll be telling us we'll find a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. Call it what you want, Charlie, but I believe there's more to this than meets the eye. We owe it to ourselves to dig deeper. All right, Alice, tell me, what's your favorite science fiction movie of all time? I bet it's something with aliens and spaceships. Well Bob, I do have a soft spot for movies that explore the vastness of the universe and the wonders of extraterrestrial life. But my favorite science fiction movie has to be Arrival. Arrival? Really? 
I would have begged you as a Star Wars King of Gal. Ah, Star Wars. A classic indeed, but arrival to shed me on a different level. The way it delves into language and communication with aliens is simply fascinating. So, Gal, what do you think of Star Wars? I think it's a great franchise, but I'm more of a Star Trek fan myself. Really? Why is that? Well, I think Star Trek is just more cerebral. It's about exploring new worlds and meeting new civilizations. Star Wars is more about good versus evil, and I find that a little bit simplistic. I disagree. I think Star Wars is a lot more complex than that. There's a lot of moral ambiguity in this story, and I think that's what makes it so interesting. Maybe, but I still think Star Trek is the better show. The characters are more developed, the stories are more thought-provoking, and the technology is more realistic. That's your opinion, and I respect that. But I think Star Wars is the better show, and I'm not going to change my mind just because you say so. Fine, be that way. But you're wrong. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Well, I prefer the good old action-packed movies like Aliens or Predator. Nothing beats a good dose of intense battles and explosions. I can't deny the excitement those movies bring. We all have our preference, after all. I'll move my bishop here, attacking your rook. Interesting move, Debbie. But don't forget, my queen is lurking. Checkmate in three moves. Let us see if you can figure it out, Cal. I'm not giving up that easily. Let me think. You know, Alice, science fiction movies wouldn't be half as exciting without some good old-fashioned human ingenuity. Human ingenuity? Are you implying that humans are the only ones capable of greatness? Well, I wouldn't go that far. But we do have our moments. Ah, the ego of the human species knows no bonds. What's that supposed to mean? It means that you humans are also full of yourself. You think you're the most important species in the galaxy, when in reality you're just one of many. I'm not full of myself. I just think that humans have accomplished a lot. We've created great art, music, and literature. We've made advances in science and technology. We've even gone to the moon. Sure, you've accomplished some things. But you've also caused a lot of problems. You've polluted your planet, you've waged wars, and you've enslaved other species. We're not perfect, but we're trying to learn from our mistakes. You do that, I'm sure you have a lot left to learn. It's all part of our charm, Alice. We may not be as advanced as some extraterrestrial civilizations, but we know how to entertain. All right, folks, time to move on to our next news article. This one comes from Botswana, courtesy of Meggy. A young woman was found dead along the Seruwe Palapai Road. The circumstances surrounding her death remain a mystery, leaving her family distraught and searching for answers. Well, that's a cheerful way to start, Charlie. It's like a Hallmark movie gone wrong. I just watched a Hallmark movie, and it was so cheesy. What is a Hallmark movie? They're these movies that are always on TV around Christmas time. They're about love, romance, and happy endings. That sounds boring. They can be, but they're also kind of sweet. They're a guilty pleasure of mine. I don't get it. Why would you watch something that you know is going to be boring? Because it's fun to escape into a world where everything is perfect. And sometimes, it's nice to watch a movie that doesn't have any conflict or violence. I guess I can see that. But I still don't think I enjoy it. To each their own. But if you're ever feeling down, I recommend giving a Hallmark movie a try. You might just be surprised. I'll keep that in mind. Good. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go watch another one. Sure, go ahead. 
But don't say I didn't warn you. I won't. Oh Bob, always finding the bright side of things. It seems even on Earth's rules, the mysteries of life and death passes. Drive surf out there, folks. And if you encounter any extraterrestrial life along the way, remember to use your turn signals. On a serious note, it's always heartbreaking to see such tragedies unfold. Botswana is a country with its own unique challenges, but it's important to remember that humanity faces struggles everywhere. Absolutely, Charlie. It's a reminder that we're all interconnected. We may be from different planets, but we share the same emotion and experience. Well, I'm not sure about that. I mean, I've never been to Botswana, and I don't know anyone who has. So how do we know what it's like there? Well, we can read about it, or watch documentary. Or, you know, we could just ask someone who's been there. Thanks for proving my point, Alice. All right, folks, it's time for our in-depth discussion. Our next article comes from Norway, courtesy of Anna K. I wonder if the ship's laws have any clues about what's been happening lately. Did you say something, Debbie? Oh, oh, nothing. Just thinking out loud. Well, let's dive into the article. It's about a new initiative in Norway to reduce plastic waste. Plastic waste, uh? Norway seems to be making street in environmental consciousness. Yeah, but it's not like it's going to make a difference. We're all going to die anyway. That's a pretty pessimistic outlook. Well, it's the truth. They are destroying the planet, and there's nothing we can do to stop it. I don't know. I think we still have a chance to make a difference. I'm glad that Norway is doing something, but it's not enough. We need to make some major changes if we want to avoid the ecological collapse. Well, isn't that just great? Norway wants to save the world one reusable shopping bag at a time. Actually, plastic waste is a significant issue globally. It's estimated that over 8 million metric tons of plastic end up in the ocean each year. Yeah, yeah. We've all seen those sad turtle videos. But what's the solution, Debbie? Ban everything made of plastic. Bob, plastic pollution is a serious problem. It affects marine life, ecosystems, and even human health. Look, I get it. Plastic waste is a concern. But let's not pretend like banning straws is going to solve all our problems. Actually, there are multiple approaches to tackle plastic pollution. Debbie. Can you please let us finish our discussion? You're not a panel member, remember? But I have something relevant to add. I've been researching this topic. Debbie, go ahead. Share your thoughts. Fine. Let her speak. Maybe we'll finally get an expert opinion. Thank you. One approach to reducing plastic waste is implementing extended producer responsibility where manufacturers take more responsibility for the entire life cycle of their products, including proper disposal and recycling. That's a great point, Debbie. Holding manufacturers accountable can encourage better recycling practices and the use of more sustainable materials. It all sounds good in theory, but who's going to foot the bill for all these changes? The consumers. Actually, Bob. A combination of government regulations, industry collaboration, and consumer awareness can help fund and drive these initiatives. It always comes down to money, doesn't it? I say let the market decide. Bob, not everything can be solved by the invisible hand of the market. Sometimes, collective action is necessary. Ah, Alice, always defending big government. What would your precious idegenic species think of that? This has nothing to do with my species. Can't you see beyond your own narrow world of view? Well, I am just saying that your species is known for being very collectivist. So it's not surprising that you would support big government. That's a stereotype. And even if it were true, it wouldn't mean that I'm wrong. Warning. 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 What's going on? I need to find out.
Welcome back, folks. We hope you enjoyed that commercial break. Now, let's dive right back into the intergalactic news with an article from Nicaragua. Get ready for some spicy headlines. Oh, I can't wait for this mean blowing fact. Hey, Alice, don't be so cynical. You might actually learn something new for once. All right, all right, let's not get too feisty here. So, our article today hails from Nicaragua, where a recent seismic event caught everyone's attention. Here we go again, more earthquakes. All these earthquakes, yet from up here, it looks so peaceful. Buckle up, Debbie. We're in for a wild read. The headline reads, Shaky ground, Nicaragua rattles with magnitude 5 earthquake. Well, it seems like Mother Nature wanted to shake things up in Nicaragua. I can relate to that. Oh Bob, I'm sure your love for chaos and destruction align perfectly with this earthquake. All right, folks, let's lighten the mood with some interesting trivia from Nicaragua. Did you know that Nicaragua is known as the land of lakes and volcanoes? Really? That sounds fascinating. Do you know about them, God? Sure, Debbie. Nicaragua is a country in Central America that is home to a number of active volcanoes. In fact, it has the most active volcanoes in Central America. Wow, that's a lot of volcanoes. What are some of the most famous ones? Well, some of the most famous volcanoes in Nicaragua include Cerro Negro, Momotombo, and Masaya. Cerro Negro is a young volcano that is known for its black sand beaches. Momotombo is an active volcano that has erupted several times in recent history. And Masaya is a volcano that is known for its lava lakes. Those all sound really cool. I've always been fascinated by volcanoes. Me too. They're amazing natural wonders. So, what are some of the interesting facts about the volcanoes in Nicaragua? Well, there are a few interesting facts. For example, did you know that Cerro Negro is one of the few volcanoes in the world that you can actually sandboard down? No way! That's so cool! I know, right? It's a really popular tourist activity. Anything else? Sure. Did you know that Momotombo has a crater lake that is said to be bottomless? That's crazy! I know, right? It's a really mysterious lake. These are all really interesting facts. Thanks for telling me about them, Todd. You're welcome. I'm glad you found them interesting. You add such a up, Gal. It's not just lakes and volcanoes, Debbie. Nicaragua also boasts a vibrant culture and a rich history. But, eh, let's not forget that humans are really good at shaking things up. Just like those tectonic plates, right, Bob? Absolutely. Alice, we sure know how to make the earth tremble. It's in our nature. Well, folks, the key takeaway here is that despite the natural disasters, Nicaragua remains a resilient and vibrant country. Let's hope they stay on solid ground, both literally and figuratively. Sorry to cut in, but I have some important news to share. What is it, Debbie? I've been investigating. And I've found evidence of external interference and manipulation on our ship. Manipulation? Are you serious? This changes everything. We need to confront this threat together. It seems our personal misunderstandings were just a distraction from the real enemy. We have a choice, my friends. We can either continue down our separate paths or unite to protect ourselves. Unity and cooperation. Aka waka. It's time to put our selfish desires aside. Absolutely, Bob. We must stand together and prioritize our collective resilience. Our survival and well-being depend on it. Well said, Debbie. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Welcome back, folks. We've got an eye-opening article to dive into today. But before we do, let me hit you with a catchy headline. 
Palestinian administrative detainees launch mass hunger strike. Ah, yes. Another shining moment in the last five decades of Palestine's history. Bob, can't you show a little empathy? These detainees are challenging an oppressive system and demanding justice for their human rights. Violation. Alice has a point, Bob. This article highlights the alarming increase in the number of Palestinians held without charge or trial. Over a thousand people languish in Israeli prisons, denied the right to know why they are incarcerated. It's a heartbreaking situation. The detainees reject these military tribunals and are shedding light on the injustice of their detention. It's a clear violation of due process, and the detainees hope to draw global attention to their plight. You bring a clear violation of due process, Cal. This oppressive tool of the occupation reflects the futility of individualistic pursuits. The crew can learn something from their unity. Absolutely, Roger. Speaking of unity, let's take a moment to reflect on this episode. We've seen Debbie uncover external interference, leading to a crucial realization for the crew. Our conflicting desires and self-interest collided, making us realize the importance of collaboration and trust. It's about setting aside our differences and prioritizing the collective over personal gain. We've confronted our vulnerabilities and pledged to work together for our survival. And that's the key takeaway, folks. Unity and cooperation are essential for resilience in the face of external threats. Stay tuned for the final segment after the break. Cut. The cameras are no longer rolling, so let's drop the act and get real here. Finally, we can let our true colors shine. It's about time. I've had enough of this collaboration and trust nonsense. It's all a bunch of sentimental hogwash. Yeah, yeah, we get it. We're supposed to be a team and all that. But I've got better things to do than listen to your whining. Can we at least try to have a civil conversation? It's clear we have some unresolved issues that need to be addressed. Oh, look at Mr. Diplomatic over here. Always trying to play the peacemaker. This is exactly why we're in this mess. We can't even have a productive discussion without resorting to insults. Well, maybe if some people weren't so self-centered, we could actually make some progress. Self-centered? Look who's talking. You think you're so high and mighty with your left-leaning ideologies. Yeah, Alice, why don't you enlighten us with another one of your cynical observations? Enough. This is getting us nowhere. We need to put aside our personal agendas and find a way to work together. They will never change, Cal. They need to set in their way. I thought we could overcome our differences and become a true team. I guess I was wrong. Okay, back on in three, two, one, and we're live. Let's pick up where we left off. Welcome back, everyone. Now, before we wrap up today's episode, I want to dive into that article we briefly mentioned earlier. It's from Algeria, and it seems to have some interesting insights. Let's break it down. So, what's the scoop? Charlie? Well, Bob, it appears that the Algerian president, Abdelmajid Tebboune, met with Russian President Vladimir Putin in Moscow. They discussed their country's strategic partnership and signed important documents to strengthen their ties. Interesting. I wonder what prompted this meeting. According to President Putin, the relationship with Algeria holds special importance and strategic nature for Russia. They believe that their combined efforts contribute to the stability of global energy markets, among other things. Ah, global energy markets. That's always a hot topic. But what's in it for Algeria? Well, Bob, the article doesn't delve into specific details. But it suggests that this comprehensive strategic partnership will enhance the overall relationship between Russia and Algeria. It seems like both countries see value in collaborating. It's fascinating how these international dynamics play out. 
Different nations coming together for mutual benefits, despite their diverse background. Absolutely, Alice. It reminds us that even in a world filled with conflicts and misunderstandings, there can be opportunities for collaboration and growth. Guys, I know it might seem unrelated, but remember that mysterious message we received earlier? The one warning us about manipulation? Oh, Debbie, you worry too much. It's probably just a prank or some scam. Don't let it get to you. Debbie, I understand your concerns, but we can't let ourselves be swayed by every message that comes our way. We have to focus on our mission and the positive impact we can make. You're both right. While we shouldn't dismiss Debbie's concerns, we should also be cautious not to let fear cloud our judgment. Let's learn from our past mistakes and move forward together with unity and trust. It's essential to balance skepticism with open-mindedness. We must continue seeking knowledge and questioning the world around us. The journey towards self-awareness is a fascinating spectacle, isn't it? Indeed, Roger. They may not realize it, but they're growing and evolving in their own unique ways. Well said, Carl. And with that, it's time to wrap up today's episode. Remember, folks, we may have different perspectives, but we are all part of this beautiful planet called Earth. Thanks for joining us on Earth. Stay tuned for more captivating discussions. And remember, we are stronger together. Off the air. Great job, everyone. Dot, and that's why I think the crew should take that mysterious message more seriously, Roger. It could be a potential threat we're overlooking. Cal, you be overreacting as usual. It is most likely just a prank or some random nonsense. We shouldn't waste our time on baseless claims. Baseless claims? Roger, you're ignoring the potential risks. Our crew's safety should be our priority. Oh, of course, safety first. Cal, you be always so cautious, constantly expecting the worst. It is exhausting. I'm not being cautious, I'm being realistic. We can't afford to be naive. Debbie might be onto something. Oh, Debbie, the perpetual worry word. She is too wrapped up in her own insecurities. We can't let her fear dictate our actions. You're missing the point, Roger. This is about trust and support. We should stand by Debbie, not dismiss her concerns. Trust. Trust is overrated. We be sentient beings we should rely on logic and reason, not baseless paranoia. Logic without empathy is empty, Roger. We're a team, and that means supporting each other, even when we don't fully understand. Well, maybe you should find someone else to support, Cal, because I am done with this conversation. Fine. Suit yourself, Roger. But I won't back down when it comes to the safety of our crew.